Ah, Sidonine, the starting village, a place that is filled with just so much nostalgia. How many times have we all stepped off the boat here, ready to begin a new adventure? But always the same small place. A damp little village, a lighthouse here, a few shacks there. But it doesn't have to be exactly the same, now does it? For today's mod the day is Obsidianine, a damp little squat by Lucival. A complete overhaul and expansion to the quaint little town of Sidonine, a damp little squad aims to give this iconic starting city a more unique look for the flavor of the so-called Swamp Fever capital of Ardenfell. And it does so by combining a lot of different elements from the Sidonine overhauls of years past. Uh, namely, the Sidonine overhaul by the Inwars and Mushrooms team. Uh, utilizing a lot of the same detailing and uh, even some of the same buildings from that mod. And also the unique, more shabby looking Imperial architecture from Shabby Sidonine by Lucivar and Dim Nuisance. Combined with new elements and a new expansion to make Sidonine feel like the gateway to Vardenfell that it was always supposed to be, a damp little squat is a beautifully transformative and atmospheric Sidonine experience. And now the town actually feels like a port, with more docks, an actual coast guard station, taverns for sailors, and just a whole lot more. All without making Sidonine feel like, you know, it's some sort of unwieldy metropolis. Uh, which is, you know, kind of a pitfall that uh, past mods have uh, kind of fallen into. And uh, you can see how this compares to the layout of Vanilla Sidonine just uh, right here. The waterfront in the Vanilla game had only a single dock, and uh, that was the one that your ship arrives at. But uh, now you can see it has more docks and more waterfront structures and cargo cranes, giving it the feel of an actual port. Uh, taking a different angle uh, from the lighthouse, at the vanilla game, Sidonine had a sparse appearance, lacking density and detail. And notably, and not the case with Damp Little Squat. At which, you know, while not a big expansion, it does give the village just a bit more density and, naturally, verticality. While the heart of the village in Vanilla Morrowind was an acceptable sight in 2002, it, it lacked the detail one expects to find in 2023. But uh, that's not the case here, for the village now has a well for drawing water, with moss draping the buildings and uh, generally just a whole lot more clutter. The waterway and bridge, once unadorned and completely undetailed, and now have new decorative and scenic elements with a lower bridge for storing cargo and cliffs to line the waterway. The shack district of Sidonine was originally a rather plain affair for the town's less fortunate citizens, a few buildings just scattered in the muck, and now it has more the detail of the slums, makeshift plank walkways, lanterns, clothing lines, and a new shack to give it life. From the water, the Bay of Sidonine was plainly underpopulated in Vanilla Morrowind, with a lot of unused space. And not so here, where Damp Little Squad smartly adds new additions, filling in the bay without, you know, tripling the size of the city. And for one last quick comparison, here's the roadway into town. And you can see Damp Little Squad overhauls the landscape just a bit and adds a new house and a new tower to act as a guard barracks. And now, with those comparison shots out of the way, uh, we can take a closer and more detailed look at Damp Little Squat's interpretation of Sidonine. And uh, for those who watched our previous showcase of Sidonine from the Inwars and Mushrooms team, uh, you'll see a lot of similarities. The night landscape overhaul, using those herb starred cliffs, the bridge leading into town, the additional streetlights, the new shack, tower, the changes to the lighthouse, 
And uh, even some of the docks, cargo cranes, and fishing boats are all originally from the Inwars and Mushrooms team. Uh, but uh, they've been blended in with Shabby Cedanine, a mod that replaced the town's common and pure architecture with unique variants that just a better fit the swampy nature of this mucky little village. The thatch roofs are no longer a vibrant colour. Instead, they're a sickly green, more fitting for such a humid environment, with moss clinging to the and not quite so whitewashed walls of the more wealthy residents' abodes. The tower buildings use more wood in their construction, offering a clear, visible distinction from the impure architecture found in other settlements, like Plesiad and Caldera. And of course, there's the new additions, added by Damp Little Squat, including two new taverns just clustered around the lighthouse, alongside the new garrison for the Imperial Coast Guard, a complete with their own little dock. Combined, all of this makes Cedanine feel like a new, more interesting town, with distinct areas that just clearly fit the life in a harbor town. A small set of docks, fishing nets, and other bits of detritus just clearly define the slums down on the water's edge, where most of the residents subsist day to day on fishing. The taverns around the port cater to sailors, while Ariel's trade house meets the demand of new colonists just arriving in this foreign land. With the new taverns and case guard, there's also new interiors, and new dialogue. The two taverns serve different crowds, the one more an eatery, the other more of a sailor's din, with all the vices that usually come with that. And uh, the NPCs here will just have some new greetings, and maybe also just a few little topics to talk about. But uh, they're otherwise just a pair of uh, rather atmospheric locations for you to find when you're first arriving in Vardenfell. The Coast Guard, on the other hand, it not only has an atmospheric new interior, and NBCs with new dialogue, uh, but it even has a new little quest, uh, giving you just a little extra incentive to deal with the town's smuggling problem. And also, a little backstory as to why the Coast Guard seems to be just so ineffective with dealing with the rampant smuggling in the Bitter Coast. Uh, the rest of the interior includes quarters for the Coast Guard garrison, a little kitchen, and a front office, all just tastefully decorated with assets from old data. And uh, new interiors aren't uh, the only things to be found in Damp Little Squat, for there's also new additions to several of the vanilla game interiors, including an extra bedroom in the Census and Excise office, uh, presumably where Socius Regardless sleeps. I mean, he's not a vampire, you know, he has to sleep sometime, and uh, that means he needs a bedroom. Uh, the Census and Excise Office also now has an attic, where you'll find a set of quarters for the office staff and guards, uh, just, you know, rather atmospherically detailed. And uh, speaking of attics, uh, there's also one in Ariel's Trade House, a little nook for storage and a hammock to sleep in, a just a rather charmingly cozy little spot to get some shut eye. Beyond these new interior additions, a damp little squat also just lightly details Cedanine's interiors, giving them that old magic touch, with a bit of new clutter, furnishings, fireplaces, and just other minor additions that, uh, for the most part, blend in seamlessly. Uh, there's a new abode for Processus Vitalius, because, you know, the tax collector had to have lived somewhere, a barracks for the local guards, and a light overhaul of the Salt Strider port, all built with an eye for compatibility with just a number of the more prominent mons in the Bitter Coast. And uh, all told, a damp little squat is uh, one of, if not the, best overhaul of this famed starting village. Uh, it is definitely just, you know, worth playing for yourself. But uh, that's it for today's Mod of the Day. So, as always, uh, I've been your host, Dark Elf Guy. Uh, thanks for watching, stay safe, stay healthy, happy modding, and I'll just, I'll uh, see you all next time.